Hello and good morning friends, welcome to Edusite CEC live lecture. Dear friends, in this session as you know, uh, we daily try to cater new subjects, new topics and today also we are going to uh, discuss on a very interesting topic and the topic is growth of Indian media industry. So my dear friends, I would like to tell you that on this very topic today we have with us in our studios Dr. Surbhi Dahiya. She is an associate professor in IIMC that is Institute of Indian Mass Communication in the Department of English Journalism. I also like to tell you that earlier she was associated with the Delhi University as assistant professor and apart from this she worked as a media professional that is she was in the media industry as a reporter correspondent and media manager uh, for almost three and a half years so dear friends I would like to uh, welcome our guest Dr. Surbhi Dhaya to this edusit session of ours and I hope that from this session that is particularly uh, with this subject uh, you will be well acquainted and and uh, you will be able to know more new facts which may you have uh, or you might have skipped earlier. So, first of all, I would like to welcome our guest, Dr. Surbhi Dhaiya. Hello, uh, ma'am. Uh, welcome you, to the Edusit lecture. And uh, I hope all the students who might be watching us right now would be benefited from this particular lecture. So, over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Kitika. Today, I will begin with uh, the growth of Indian media industry in India. And to begin with the Indian media industry as a whole, I would like to give you an overview of the Indian media industry. Actually, the Indian media industry reaches millions of people, around 161 million TV households today, 94,067 newspapers in which 12,551 12, are almost dailies close to 2,000 multiplexes and 214 million internet users out of which 130 million are mobile internet users. All these are platforms that could drive change and be transformational catalysts. So media's upward growth journey is continuing. Students, according to various reports which were released this year, the data goes like this. The PWC report, that's the Price Waterhouse Coopers report on monetization strategies in the media sector released in the September this year, the Indian uh, entertainment and media industry generated 1,120 billion INR in revenue in 2013, showing an increase of 19% over the previous year. The FIKI KPMG report 2014 report released earlier this year titled The Stage is Set says that the Indian media and entertainment industry has grown by 11.8% in 2013 vis-a-vis -vis 2012 and it has touched Rs 918 billion. By the end of 2014, the industry is expected to stand at Rs 1039 billion. So, the, if we see the expectation, it is expected to touch 1785.8 billion by 2018 with a CAGR of 14.2 percent and the Price Waterhouse Cooper report says that it is almost 15 percent. So, let us examine all the sectors one by one in detail. The first one is obviously the print media, the oldest medium. The print sector has a comfortable year, had a comfortable year this year, especially regional print with English print struggling on the ad revenue front, advertising remained steady. The print, if you see in INR in billions, if we compare the uh, print medium for the last five years and we see the projections for the last five years, let me tell you students that in 2008, it pegged at 172 billion, which raised to 175.2 billion in 2009. Correspondingly, it raised to 192.9 billion in 2010. 
and 2008.8 and 2024.1 respectively in 2011 and 12. Whereas in 2013, it was it had 243.1 billion INR. So the growth rate of the last five years, if you analyze the growth rate of the last five years, that's 2008 to 2013, you can see that the average growth rate was 8.5 percent in print. Now the print medium's revenue stood at around rupees 22. 1300 crores marking an increase of 5.1 respectively over 2012 and is expected to touch 31,400 crores at the end of 2018. Whereas FIKI KM KPMG report states that calendar year 2013 saw the print industry grow by 8.5 as I just told you from rupees 224 billion in 2012 to rupees 243 billion in 2013. The growth achieved was slightly better than the KPMG's estimate of 7.6 percent last year and the long-term growth in the sector looks very promising with industry players witnessing strong growth and a possible future demand in the regional market. Even though print media has shown steady growth in the last calendar year the macroeconomic environment continues to be challenging. The Indian economy has witnessed a slowdown, clocking an average GDP growth rate of only 4.9% in financial year 2013-14. Contrary to the prevailing trends in the global print media, where there is intense competition from digital media, the print sector in India is showing a strong upsurge. The print industry is expected to grow at a CAGR of 9% for 2013 to 2018 as against estimated 8.7% which was expected last year. Now let us see the attribution to the, print, to the growth of print media in India whereas globally the growth of print media is very different from India. Much of this growth can be attributed to print media's advertising revenues and the faith shown by advertisers in this medium. Most advertisers have shunned their cautious approach backing the extensive reach and localization benefits that print offers. Some of the big spending sectors such as FMCG, retail and real estate have increased their media spend on print this year. Print has also witnessed a boost in the advertising revenues due to the elections and advertising spends by political parties are expected to benefit the print media this calendar year as well. The print industry continued to drive most that's 94.4 percent of its revenues from the newspaper category. The rupees 14 billion magazine segment had a roller coaster ride this year. Some prominent publishing houses discontinued their magazines this year. On the other hand, specific niche magazines witnessed high growth with, with their well defined readership and advertiser base. However, the magazine space in India continues to face growth challenges. The growth in the magazine industry is expected to decline over the next five years and may constitute 3.5 percent of the total print industry. Now let's have a look at the global uh, uh, newspaper industry. Globally the newspaper industry revenue decline will finally end in 2015. Global total newspaper revenue after a period of decline will start to climb again in 2015 as the growth in the developing countries newspaper revenue begins to exceed the decline in the mature markets. Growth will stabilize at 0.1 percent CAGR through to 2018. Now this is the graph where you can see that in uh, to, uh, continuously from 2009 the print medium is on the decline and in 2013, 14, 15 it will show stability whereas it will again start rising in 2016 globally. 
So, but the future of the newspaper will vary significantly by the region. While the Asia Pacific market is set to grow at a CAGR of 3.4 percent through to 2018 based on increased consumer and advertiser demand, especially in China that is 8.3 percent CAGR and India that is 7.5 percent CAGR, North America has been forecasted to fall at a CAGR of minus 4.2 percent as the migration of advertising and readers to digital continues. If we look at the global circulation, then circulation revenue will almost match advertising revenues by 2018 it is said. In 2013, while circulation revenues rose globally after years of decline, advertising revenue continued to fall. Circulation's share of total revenue will rise from 47% in 2013 to 49% by 2018, meaning consumers may soon become publisher's biggest source of revenue. We have just uh, our minister, honorable minister, Mr. Prakash Javedkar uh, last month uh, released uh, this um, press in India you can find it on the website of Ministry of Information and Broadcasting as well and they felt very proud that till 31st March 2014 as good as 99,660 publications that is newspapers and other periodicals have been registered in India witnessing a constant growth of the print media. This growth in the number of registered publications and circulation thereof disproves uh, the common apprehension that proliferation of audio visual media and internet would significantly affect the print media. It has enabled the common man who started asserting his rights to participate in the functioning of the institutions to strengthen democracy. Print media has responded to the new challenges and the changes with its modern approach. It has embraced information technology which resulted in better coverage with great speed and affordable price. The readership of newspapers is also growing. So let us have a look at the new publications. During 2013-14, 5,642 new publications were registered and 49 registered publications ceased their publication. As on 31st March 2014, there were 99,660 registered publications on record and against 94,067 at the end of March 2013. The total circulation of publications increased from 40 crores, 50 lakhs, 37,930 copies per publishing day in 2012-13 to 45 crores, 5 lakhs, 86,212 copies per publishing day in 2013-14. The number of annual statements filed online by registered publishers in the office of RNI, that is Registrar of Newspapers of India, for the years for the year 2013-14 was 19,755 against 19,007 in 2012-13 registering an increase of 3.94 percent. So this itself tells you that how print medium in India has also increased. As per the annual statements received from 2013-14, the number of dailies being published in the country was 6,730 as against 5,767 during 2012-13. and 13. The claimed circulation of the dailies increased by 17.81 percent from 22 crores, 43 lakhs, 37,600 52 copies to 26 crores, 42 lakhs, 89,811 copies per publishing day. Hindi had 3,213 dailies claiming a circulation of 12 crores, 
67,693 copies, while 695 English and 929 Urdu dailies claimed 3 crores 31 lakhs 48,808 and 2 crores 72 lakhs 88,254 copies per publishing day respectively. There were 25 try and buy weeklies with a total claimed circulation of 8, uh, eight sorry 8 lakhs 93,218 copies per publishing day in comparison to 36 try and buy weekly with a total claimed circulation of 11 lakhs 87,995 copies per publishing day in 2012 and 13. And if you see the circulation levels, then the, uh, the newspaper called Anand Bazar Patrika, which is a Bengali daily and published from Kolkata, turned to be the largest circulated single edition daily with a claimed circulation of 11,81,112 copies per publishing day, followed by the Times of India, an English daily published from Mumbai with a claimed circulation of 10,26,153 copies and Hindustan Times, an English daily published from Delhi with a circulation of 9,75,737 copies per publishing day. In the second category, the Times of India having 29 editions in English with a total claimed circulation of 47,42,000. Uh, and uh, 671 copies per publishing day occupied the first position among the multi-edition dailies during 2013-14. If you see the uh, next category, the Sunday Times of India, an English weekly edition from Mumbai, was the largest circulated periodical in 2013 and 14 with a claim to circulation of 10,21,260 copies per publishing day. So this was all about uh, print medium in India and uh, this was in detail because print medium, the growth of print medium in India and uh, the growth of print medium globally does not match. So let's go to the next medium which is television. Television continues to be the largest segment with strong subscription uh, revenues. Revenue from television including both subscription and advertising increased 15 percent to rupees 42,000 crores in 2013 from rupees 36,600 crores in the previous year. The growth was led by an increase in the subscription revenue driven by the ongoing process of digitization. India is expected to be among the fastest growing markets in the terms of TV subscription revenues from 2013 to 2018. Television sector revenues is expected to touch Rs 84,600 crores in 2018. Which is also indicated in the KPMG report that says the size of the television industry in India was estimated at Rs 417 billion in 2013 and is expected to grow at a CAGR of 16 percent to reach Rs 885 billion in 2018. So aided by digitization and the consequent increase in average revenue per user that is ARPU, the share of subscription revenue to the total industry revenue is expected to increase from 67% in 2013 to 71% in 2018. If you see the facts and figures uh, which are available through these reports, in the last five years, in 2008, the uh, in television industry pegged at rupees uh, uh, 241 uh, billions, which raised to, to 257 billions in 2009. In 2010, the figure was 297 billion, which raised to 329 in 2011, and it consequently became 370 in 2012 
and 417.2 in 2013. So the growth rate that uh, was ex, uh, uh, analyzed was 12.7 percent here and which is the growth rate which is projected till 2018 is uh, ranging between 478.9 billion to 885 billion which uh, which is uh, uh, pegged at 16.2 billion 2 uh, percent increase so in television industry the structures began to process of uh, realignment with MSOs and LCOs to evolve their relationships. Several regulations including the ad cap and notifications around aggregators were announced they, that will likely change how the industry does business now. Digitization has yet to deliver its promise with set up boxes seeded in all the three phases. The future though looks promising with efforts being made to introduce channel packaging, implement subscriber management systems and raise the ARPU's initiatives that are likely to benefit all the stakeholders in the television ecosystem. So the television industry in India is estimated at INR 417 billion in 2013 which is expected at a CAGR of 16.2 percent over the next five years. The pay television penetration in India is still not up to the global benchmarks. So the increase in the ARPU will continue to drive growth in the, in the television segment for the next five years irrespective of high growth in digital and other niche segments. And the paid CNS penetration of television households expected to increase to 90 percent by 2018. The number of TV households in India increased to 161 million in 2013 implying a TV penetration of 60 percent. The number of cable and tele, uh, satellite subscribers increased by 9 million in 2013 to reach 139 million. Excluding DD Direct, the number of paid CNS subscribers is estimated to be 130 million. This CNS subscriber base is expected to grow to 181 million by 2018, representing 95 percent of TV households. Of this, paid CNS base is expected to be 171 million in 2013, representing 90 percent of TV households. You can see this graph broadcasts industry size. And broadcasting uh, the tries efforts to in enforce the 12 minute ad cap regulation invited a divided response from the industry and contributed to the challenges of broadcasters, especially those with significant dependence on advertising revenues. At an aggregate level, the total TV advertising market is estimated to have grown around 9% in 2013 to Rs 136 billion lower than the 11 percent projected in the reports last year. Going forward, television advertising in India is expected to grow at a CAGR of 13 percent over the next five years to reach Rs 220 billion. And the subscription revenue is expected to be the driver of growth for broadcasters growing at an estimated CAGR of 26 percent from 2013 to 2018. Increase in the declared subscriber base and the higher revenue share is expected to drive up the share of subscription to total broadcaster revenue from 34 percent in 2013 to 46 percent in 2018. Another segment that we can see uh, growth is the regional media. Regional media in India has demonstrated strong growth over last few years and continues to have a positive outlook. 
given the size and diversity of the Indian media uh, market, media owners and advertisers are increasingly adding a regional element to their strategies. As a result, regional markets have grown in size and importance. The key drivers of growth in the regional media space continue to be a better cultural fit for regional content. Focus on socio-political issues related to particular regions and stronger engagement with customers in contrast to national Hindi programming. The big hope for the future of the m and &E industry continues to be digital. With the fast growing internet user base of over 200 million internet users, the potential of the industry to enhance engagement with customers and generate revenue from digital media is indeed vast. 2013 saw a few tipping points for digital as well. The telecom companies began to focus on data as a revenue driver as contribution from voice slowed and the advertising agencies began a furious competition to acquire digital and social media boutiques. All of these point to a bright future in this sector. The increasing shift towards the digital medium has led internet access to overtake print as the second largest segment. I remember the words of Chandrajit uh, Banerjee, the director journal of CII, saying, clearly the future lies in digital media as the internet segment in leading the growth in India. The increasing shift towards the digital medium is evident from the burgeoning subscription revenue from internet access. At rupees 25,300 crores, the subscription revenue from net connections overtook the print medium industry revenue for, from advertising and subscription for 2013 at rupees 22,300 crores. This made it the second largest revenue contributor to the print industry after television driven by growth in adoption of mobile internet in the country. It is a phenomenon of growing numbers of subscription subscribers both on mobile as well as wired platforms. Digital first is becoming the norm for the newspaper publishers as well. For many years, news publishers digital output was led by their print products, but increasingly titles will be reorganized as digital first operations, publishing content that works best on the connected devices. Digital ad spend, uh, the reports say that it is expected to register a CAGR of 14.2% to touch rupees 1785.8 billion by 2018, wherein digital advertising is expected to have the highest CAGR of 27.7%, while all the other subsectors are expected to grow at a CAGR in the range of 9 to 18%. Digital media is expected to continue its growth trajectory with projected growth rate of 36.9% in 2014. PricewaterhouseCoopers said the widespread technological advances and the digital experience has ushered in a new mindset to make business quicker, more targeted, experimental and collaborative. It has become imperative for emerging business models to move beyond digital innovation to customer engagement innovation to reap the benefits of digital transformation in India. The report also highlights that businesses no longer need a digital strategy. What they actually need is a business strategy fit for a digital age which is about getting even closer to the consumer and adopting more flexible business models. To do this, companies must exhibit three behaviors. One, forging trust with consumers. Two, creating the confidence to move with speed and agility and empowering innovation.
keeping pace with the changing consumer behavior and increased access to digital devices, the new media ecosystem evolved to new levels in this year. The internet usage increased with mobile phones providing an important medium for penetration to rural areas. Connectivity and access continued to provide the tailwind for growth of various components comprising new media in the year gone by. The total internet user base in India grew to approximately 214 million by the end of the year with almost 130 million going online using mobile devices. Mobile internet users dominated the total internet user base capturing an overall share of 61%. Digital ad spend in new media and the landscape digital advertising in India grew by approximately 38.7% as I told you to touch uh, rupees uh, 30.1 billion in 2013. Indian mobile advertising is expected to grow at 50% and reach rupees 5.1 billion by the end of 2014. Digital marketers are recognizing this trend and are now considering to, to or are already on their way to execute mobile first branding and customer engagement strategies. The ad spend in digital media is set to grow at 37% to reach rupees 41.2 billion in 2014. Google and Facebook accounts for close to half of the online advertising revenue in Asia and the dominance can be attributed to their massive user base. So again here we have the, the same figure 38.7% uh, which, uh, which is followed by gaming which grew by 25.5% and as, uh, as for the 2018 prediction digital advertising is expected to lead a CAGR with 27.7% followed by radio with 18.1%. So the prediction for uh, the next five years for 2018 is that digital advertising is expected to lead the CAGR with 27.7% followed by radio as I just told you. Gaming and television are expected to register a CAGR of 16.2% uh, each followed by growth rates of animation and BFX that's 15.9%, music 13.2%, films 11.9% and OOH with 9.2% expected CAGR. Print stands last as far as the expected growth is concerned with 9% CAGR. Within television, subscription revenues are expected to be three times more than advertising revenues by 2018. The Indian internet usage maintained its growth trajectory. India was home to approximately 174 million internet connections by the end of 2013, which shared between wireless and wire, uh, wireline connections. Wireless connections grossed about 86% of the total internet connections in India and continue to grow at a faster pace compared to the wireline connections. Driven primarily by wireless access, the total number of internet connections is estimated to reach 463 million by the end of 2018. So the projected CAGR that is compound annual growth rate for wireline connections for the period uh, for the period of next 5 years is now expected to be 14 percent. The projected CAGR for wireline connections was 17 percent for the last 5 years and has, uh, and has come down since last year because the broadband connection base has been increasing at a lower rate than that was expected in the past. So gaming and radio 
though relatively small, are emerging as potential game changers over the next five years. With the rapidly increasing adoption of smartphones and tablets, the gaming sector is fast emerging as a promising source of revenue for the industry. Efforts by industry players as well as support from the government are expected to provide a major boost to the gaming sectors, which is still in its infancy. Out-of-home advertising is gradually expected to slide to the last position in terms of revenue contribution to the sector, with its share declining to 1% in the next five years, while music remains constant at 1% revenue share. Radio, like in, nine, uh, like in 2013, the FM radio industry is expected to outpace the growth of overall advertising revenue in the coming years. With a forecast uh, compound annual growth rate of 18.1 percent till 2018, industry revenues are expected to more than double by 2018. And phase 3 rollout is very vital for FM radio industry's growth. The other segments of the media industry have all grown by leaps and bounds. More and more TV channels continue to get launched every year. And with more transparent infrastructure projects, industry has also got a boost. And of course, the internet knows no bounds. Therefore, radio must continue to remain competitive. It has had to rely on increasing the utilization of available advertising inventory, but now with the inventories almost fully exhausted, the only way left to grow further is to have more channels and increased rates. So phase 3 is expected to provide the requisite growth impetus uh, to radio. By the end of 2018, it is expected to be pegged at rupees 4000 crores. And driven by phase 3 auctions for private FM, the radio sector is also projected to grow strongly at an average annual pace of 17%. So students, uh, you can see a minor difference in the percentages that I have quoted because I have been telling you that these percentages are uh, taken from many reports that have been released this year this year, whether it is Fiki KPMG report or it is PricewaterhouseCoopers uh, report with CII or it is the Press in India report. The films, if we talk about films, they have shown uh, slower growth in 2013 than in 2012 and returned to the mean as far as growth rates go. Multiplex expansion, ticket prices, growth and the expansion of digital screens are all likely to slow down in the next term, challenging the industry to find new avenues to maintain the momentum. However, India is a heavily underscreened country and the uh, macro story for the film industry remains the strong, strong one. If we talk about OOH, the growth uh, rate for the last five years was 5.9 and the expected growth rate for the next five years is 9.2. If you talk about music, for the last five years, the growth rate goes in minus, that's minus 9 percent, but it uh, is expected to grow at a pace of 13.2 uh, in the next five years to come. If you talk about animation, then the last five years growth rate is pegged at 12.5 percent and the next five years growth is projected at 15.9 percent. Internet access, if we talk about the next five years, the growth is pegged at around 21 percent, which is quite high. And the highest uh, which I talked about is the digital ad advertising, which is pegged at around 27.7 percent for the next five years. Another uh, important thing that uh, could be seen over the years is live events, the growth of live events. It has been emerging as a robust category. Last year saw Indian audiences flocking to show by international DJs musicians, comedians, IP driven shows 
also show record viewership and attendance. Live events have become a major source of revenue for artists and credible avenue for sponsors. Several companies in this space are heading towards critical mass and are poised to take the sector forward. So the bottom line is that the relative shares of traditional media are expected to grow to go down to accommodate growth in the newer segments. However, the individual sizes of these segments will continue to grow. The global entertainment and the media revenues will continue to grow slightly behind the global GDP. In 2018, non-digital media will continue to account for the largest share of global spending. TV will still be the biggest advertising medium. This evolving environment, according to the PwC report, will be characterized by six underlying shifts. First, the advertising revenue is out outpacing consumer revenue in the, uh, in the migration to digital. Second, by 2018, internet advertising will be poised to overtake television as the largest advertising segment. Third, biggest challenge is monetizing the digital consumer. Fourth, rising consumer revenues will be driven by 24-7 access. Fifth, revenue growth is being driven by internet access rather than content spending. Next, two-third of the revenue growth from consumers and advertising will be digital. So the total, uh, if, if we see the total growth, then in the last five years, the final figures that I'm going to give you is in uh, INR billions. In 2008, it was the whole industry was pegged at 580 billions, which raised to 587 billions in 2009. And in 2010, it rose to 652 billions. The growth was tremendous in 2011, which showed 728 billion, and in 2012, which showed 821 billion which raised to 918 billion into 2013. So it, on an average, it showed a total growth of 11.8% in the last five years. If we see, if we talk about the projections of growth in the next five years or for the total media industry, it is pegged at 1039 billion in 2014, which will which is expected to raise uh, at 1201 billion in 2015. Again in 2016, it is expected to raise 13.90 uh, billion, which will raise, which is expected to raise in f uh, to 1580 billion in 2017 and 1786 billion in 2018 respectively. So showing an, uh, showing a total CAGR of 14.2 percent in the next five years. So that's all students that uh, uh, these facts and figures speak about the growth of Indian media industry and uh, the future projections and the growth in the next five years. So thank you. Thank you ma'am, thank you so very much uh, for delivering such a nice lecture and uh, giving a deep insight into this very topic because uh, sometimes we know uh, about the facts uh, about a particular uh, uh, media organization or the media industry or uh, particularly if we talk about the radio, uh, television or the print media uh, but you have given the actual facts uh, and we hope for uh, the betterment of the media industry as a whole. Yeah. Uh, ma'am, but um, uh, here I would like to ask a question as uh, now the third phase of the radio which is going to start we can say that. Uh, uh, do you think so that if the community radios uh, would be uh, they are pushed well, uh, they could be a, a better option uh, in the area of the media industry? Yes, yes, definitely. Community radios are picking up like anything. 
Uh, yesterday only I had a talk with Anurag, uh, who is a program officer in uh, Commonwealth um, uh, Community Media Office here in Delhi. So, uh, we were just discussing that how community media is playing its role in uh, the radio segment and how uh, it is more effective in the localization and uh, spreading more uh, information and awareness at a local level. So, yeah, definitely communi community radio will play a major role in this. And phase 3, as we know, is uh, expected to start, begin very soon. So, we have high hopes from uh, uh, phase 3 as uh, we are uh, pecking the uh, radio industry growth for the next 5 years at 18.1 percent, which is a very high growth rate. Because uh, many of times we have seen that, uh, particularly with the private FM stations, the way they are exploring and the way they are generating revenue for uh, themselves is commendable. Okay. Uh, I could not take the name of the uh, FM stations here because as the reports revealed and it was revealed that uh, they crossed the sky, they crossed their own limits from the, uh, if we compare it with the previous uh, year, uh, year uh, they made a commendable uh, uh, growth. Say growth. Yeah. So, we can say that uh, the, these FM stations uh, would be able to around 15 percent that 50, they made. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, now the question arises ma'am as you talked about the internet based journalism also. Uh, do you feel so that this internet based journalism or if we say that the technology enables journalism uh, would be uh, uh, could make a achievement? Yeah, yeah definitely because um, if if I go back to this um, words of uh, uh, Chandrajit Banerjee, Director General of CII, he has clearly said that the future lies in digital media as the internet segment in leading the growth in media. And the digital advertising um, is, uh, you know, the growth rate is, will be the maximum in the next five years. It's 27.7 percent, highest of all the other media. So, mm -hmm. it is going to take the lead. Because we have seen that because uh, as people are very technology enabled now they are anywhere in the, any yeah, part of the yeah. world even if they are uh, sitting in a uh, inside a bus or traveling through a metro. People have become very tech savvy. The the smartphones have enabled mm -hmm. more penetration into the digital media. Uh, if if I wish to take uh, see a, a particular uh, news channel uh, through the smartphone and now it is available with the people that yeah, they can yeah. uh, view very their true. programs uh, or be, uh, view their shows or uh, all the content uh, they needed. So ma'am uh, with this note uh, we take your leave and thank you so very much for delivering uh, such a productive session giving us a, such a productive session. I hope that all the students who might have watched us um, would be benefited from this particular lecture and I would tell you all that uh, Dr. Surbhi Dhaya would be again with us in future lectures and uh, she is going to deliver more which I hope you needed every time and uh, all the students who sometimes skip the classes and tend to be inattentive in the classes these lectures are very productive for them. Very true. Thank you ma'am. Thank, Thank you so you. very much. Thank you Gitika.